Appropriate technique should be applied to open the mouth prior to inserting the blade. A scissoring technique or rotation of the head backward in a neuromuscularly blocked patient can be effective. The blade should be smoothly inserted from the right corner of the mouth using the left hand to hold the laryngoscope handle. The tongue should be swept to the left to optimize the laryngeal view. An alternative approach of inserting the blade down the midline may also be effective particularly with intubators with less experience. The laryngoscope handle should be lifted forward and upward to obtain a view of the glottic opening. Do not rock the handle and blade or press against the gums or teeth. Visualized anatomic landmarks can be used to guide laryngoscope position to visualize the glottic opening. Adjustments can be made to the laryngoscope insertion depth or the force being applied to laryngoscope handle to improve visualization. Providers may choose to apply a gentle downward pressure externally to the larynx to improve visualization of the glottic opening. It is often helpful for the intubator to announce recognized anatomic landmarks such as the epiglottis, posterior cartilages, and vocal cords as they are visualized. Different techniques may be used with different laryngoscope blade types. The first option is to use a straight or Miller laryngoscope blade placed directly under the tip of the epiglottis and gently lift to compress the epiglottis against the base of the tongue to provide visualization of the glottic opening. The second technique is to advance the tip of the curved, for example, Macintosh blade until it lies in the vollecula, just below the base of the tongue. The entire laryngoscope is then lifted in the direction of the handle to visualize the glottic opening. Teams must be mindful of the duration of intubation attempts. The team leader should clearly communicate with the intubator to stop a given attempt and provide rescue ventilation, ideally before a patient shows signs of desaturation or clinical deterioration. Prolonged attempts should also be avoided in patients in whom progressive hypercarbia is of concern. For example, when there's a concern for increased intracranial pressure or severe metabolic acidosis. The team leader should be mindful of the speed of desaturation, particularly in patients who cannot be fully pre-oxygenated prior to the procedure. When oxygen saturation drops below 93%, the speed of desaturation accelerates. Intubation can be re-attempted after bag mask ventilation is performed to stabilize the vital signs. If secretions block the view of the vocal cords or the glottic opening, then suction should be used to clear the view as needed. Once the glottis and the vocal cords are visualized, the provider performing the intubation should maintain the laryngoscopic view. The endotracheal tube should be handed to the intubator by one of the other team members. The tube should be inserted from the right side of the mouth through the vocal cords using one smooth motion. Avoid insertion of the endotracheal tube down the barrel of the blade as this will block the line of sight. The tube should be advanced into the trachea to the appropriate depth. A general guideline for the depth insertion is three times the internal diameter of the endotracheal tube when an uncuffed endotracheal tube is used. A cuffed endotracheal tube should be advanced until the cuff passes just beyond the vocal cords and the cuff should be inflated. The laryngoscope is then removed carefully. The provider performing the intubation then uses his or her fingers to secure the endotracheal tube, commonly by holding it against the hard palate or upper teeth while maintaining a part of the hand on the child's cheek to prevent movement. If used, the stylet is removed from the endotracheal tube at this point. The depth of the endotracheal tube at the upper teeth or gum should be reconfirmed and to confirm correct endotracheal tube position within the trachea, the team should use primary and secondary indicators including equal breath sounds and chest rise, detection of CO2, either with color change when using a colorometric CO2 detector, or a detectable CO2 waveform when using capnography. Once proper endotracheal tube position has been confirmed, the endotracheal tube should be secured in position using a commercial endotracheal tube securing device or tape according to local practice. While the endotracheal tube is being secured, 
the provider who performed the intubation should continue to hold the endotracheal tube in place using their thumb and index finger.